explain to you real quick on how I was able to achieve this design. Amazing stuff. Okay. Um, first thing first, let's start with guest at the screen. I got my illustration from Icon Scouts. Okay. And you can see that uh, if I remove this to the right is like an ellipse. Okay. That is set to what? To layer blur. Right. So if I remove this, you have something like so. So layer blur just to give it that flair. Okay. Now that's, uh, yes. And I'm using cabinet grotex and what's the word? Satoshi, right? So cabinet grotex for my display fonts, right? And then Satoshi for my secondary font. All right. So my body fonts pretty much, right? So I was, and I was able to get my, what's the word? Uh, my fonts from a website called Font Share. Um, there's an amazing designer tvesta is that his name he shared this um, site with me and i'm super grateful for it so whenever i'm looking for fonts i just come here you know, go to font peer right and you know get to see like really nice fonts that match right they recommend fonts that match matches themselves right so yeah 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 that you could check it out all right so i use that to match this uh yeah so for this and this guy here, how I did it was pretty much, it was simple really, okay? Now take this out, you see how I was able to do this. It's horizontal like so. Now you can see that I added noise to my frame, okay? But just before the noise, right? I added a simple linear feed. I clicked on my plus here, go to my gradient and added a linear feel in my case something like this i uh, one of my my stops is white right and it's brought down to zero opacity and one of them is green right? and it is, it is at 100 opacity it doesn't actually have to be 100 opacity right you could just reduce it a little bit but then instead of it reducing it what i did was to reduce the overall opacity on that linear on that linear feed, right? Which gave me this transparency that you can see here. Awesome, guys. And as for the noise, simply go to your blogin and type noise and texture. So you see this guy here, that's your guy. Simply select the intensity, the amount of um, noise you want, right? And then the size of it, and then just hand to layer, all right? So we're good. So that was what I did there, like so. So now after that similar thing here, well, yeah, I simply just use feed and reduce the opacity of my feed. So you see, um, and then again, you can see that the background is blur. What I did there was had a simple effect called background blur right? and increase intensity a little bit. You can see drop shadow. So you probably might not see that, like see it, see it, but you, it's there. It gives it this good, uh, it, gives, it gives it depth, I would say, all right? So that's that. Um, with here, pretty much, kind of like just extracted my colors from um this here, this element here. And I'm pretty much working with two colors. I did even like three, I would say. All right. So this, this, and this, right? So if I, I could select the background as one of that color, then if I open this linear here, you could see that I'm working with this, and I'm working with this. So I'm just gonna come here, paste, so you see what exactly I'm talking about. So you see these colors, I'm working with it. And what inspired the color was really just um, within this set here, I just look for a way to navigate my way in the hue spots to find a complementary color, right? That's what I did. So yeah, so I used that here, um, I placed the color here, reduced the opacity, I'm good. So here I kind of like using like a lighter shade of this, right? Then give it gradient and then reduce the opacity of one of the stops. That's exactly how I did that. Here, same thing, white but reduce the opacity just to make it a lot subtle, right? Normally I could find a a a, a shade from the background, right? And use it if I don't want to use alpha colors. Alpha simply means transparent. All right. So here, interesting, I like how this button actually turned out, right? 
I really like how it turned out. But how I did it was simple, right? I did inner shadow. So you see this um, bevel, right? You got going on there. It was inner shadow, right? And then drop shadow with this guy here. And then I did another drop shadow with 0% blur, right? That's what gave me this, you know, this round color, right? And then, of course, when you use double shadow layer, your shadow can sit on another shadow. Amazing stuff, right? Make, making your button look look really, really nice. All right. So we have that like so. Okay. And then this guy here, uh, you can see, I simply just use what? Um, um, ellipse and then just, you know, I'm for true. All right. The idea is when you click here, it's going to move to another screen, move to another screen once you probably get started. I know it's bad UX. <laughs> I know it's bad UX because why force users to view all the instead of they can just skip or get started almost immediately. Right. So but then to this screen, right? I'm just trying to explore aesthetics here. It's not it's not UX oriented. Alright. So here, simple had a frame here, right? Made it 56. Um um, radius right and then increase the corner smoothing so you see that you can see that going on it's not enormous um border radius just makes it smoother right so yeah i did that here i did similar thing here did i yeah i did all right so with all of this here i got this icon from svg repo they have really amazing icons there you could check them out um yeah so this 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 here almost white but not white just the shade all right here um, i use the green it's low opacity and then actual with the fill here all right um here i used white with low opacity but i gave them background blur hence this frosty frosty look i can actually even go further and give them um, a stroke right and then probably reduce the, the the a bit so something like this all right just it's good to pay attention to details really so this way now even looks more clickable i'm not even gonna lie it looks more clickable all right so yeah that and then for all these guys here this one i'm not sure where this guy exactly should be whether i should deprioritize it or prioritize it well it needs to look like as though it's clickable hence that hence the border um hence the background around it you know that's what i did there okay and here just it's kind of like the background i still use something like this but um reduce the opacity just to make sure it works with the background really well I could as well even use the black for this really and reduce the opacity or use white for it and reduce the opacity and it still work perfectly for me to get. So find what works for you, right? And then here yeah, and here yeah, again, exciting part. I like how this is really glowing and it's kind of like spilling over the bottom layer, right? It's simple drop shadow guys <laughs> and i was able to achieve this curve here this here is interesting i simply just placed it okay let me see if i can do one real time like right now right now so you get the gist so simple stuff just i i did i used a before i even do that i used another shape right something just find the size place it like so right uh you can even turn it like this i just inverted i made it stroke instead so just pin here right press your escape key find the center right if you can't find the center just go ahead and do here uh pin here okay there's already even center gone okay when you hover on it you see a center then from that center you just drag down like this right when you drag down she can she just give you border radius that's all that's all people exactly what i did here well i think my own went a lot down i held my shift so 
it's straight my own web a lot down so we see we have something like this all right it will use the size just to fit it in all right so have a manner we're good all right so yeah so that's that um yes if you have any question all of these icons you see here they are from svg pro right so thank you very much for your time my name remains Timothy Exodus, aka Team X Design. All right, see you in the next video, guys.